Punch with another video review. And on today's episode, thanks to the support of my patrons, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Masterpiece movie series, MPM6, of none other than Ironhide. For the package, you got this really nice masterpiece style box with images of Ironhide both in his robot as well as his vehicle mode. You can see the Transformers logo down here along the side. That big old GMC logo right there, which does denote that this is an officially licensed product by GMC. Uh, the side here, got a nice image of him in his vehicle mode. Other side here, nice kind of up close images of his robot as well as his vehicle mode. The top section, masterpiece movie series. Bottom, nothing. Back of the package, you got more images of him in his vehicle mode. That he's uh, got a posable neck, as well as a movable mouth plate, and articulated hands. And because this is a uh, part of the Masterpiece movie series, he does actually have some die cast. And then again, you come down here and you can see you got the GM logo as well as Hasbro. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. If you're familiar with a lot of the Masterpiece figures, you kind of know what you're getting. You get really high quality kind of cardboard here. And it's nice to see that carrying on here with Ironhide. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have Ironhide open up out of his packaging and obviously in his vehicle mode. And welcome to 2019, where Optobotomus is throwing it all out the window. Not that I really sugarcoated things before, but if something sucks, I'm going to tell you that it sucks. And the transformation for this guy absolutely sucks. Vehicle mode wise here, if you can get it right, actually looks pretty pretty cool his robot mode also looks pretty cool but there's a lot of parts on here like up here uh, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this but like there's a lot of stuff that I can't really get to line up and uh, stay proper uh, you, you got like this little whole front section right here which isn't completely flat uh, I feel like that's not lined up properly um, it's <sighs> almost there but almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades uh this just I, I i am very disappointed in the transformation for this guy there's a lot of really cool stuff it is definitely a masterpiece an engineered figure and while I don't mind complex transformations, this it's not that this guy is uh, not complex. It's just there's a lot of tabbing that goes in underneath everything that you can't really see. And it's very difficult to, in, in turn, perform. Truck mode wise, I love the way that this looks. Uh, I A lot of people know that I drive a Dark in the Moon inspired uh, Chevy Camaro. Uh, that was, and, and, and still is, kind of like one of the most prized possessions in my uh, collection. But to be totally honest, this is the truck that I would love to actually get. Now they made some of these back in the day. I don't really have a need for a giant truck like this, but if I had a ridiculous amount of money that I could throw at getting cars and stuff, this is one that I would love to have just because it represents what started my channel. My very first review was that Voyager class Ironhide. And the, the irony is that I had to look up how to transform that figure because I couldn't figure it out. Again, not that it was complicated, just I hadn't done it in terms of transforming toys in a long time. And this guy really does require a lot of uh, help. So I am hopeful that I'm able to help some of you guys out. The overall look on here is very nicely recreated. You can see you got some of those little side runners right here. Uh, you do have a softer rubber material for the smokestacks, but I like how they're a little bit longer. That looks really nice. You got some lights right up here across the top. Nice GMC logo. You got the road armor. You flip it underneath to the bottom here and it actually does. Uh, what, is, what does that say? Body? I, I gotta get it in the light. It, it does say something. Uh, I don't know what that says, but it does say something. Uh, but great paint detail with the grill and the GMC logo. As you can see, you got some turn signals right there. Uh, the tires are just this black plastic, but that's perfectly fine. You got the 4x4 logo right here on this uh, back section. Come around here the back. Again, gorgeous detail with the taillights. I even like how the, uh, the GMC logo right here has an outline of uh, silver, which looks really good. You get that in the light, you can see the nice Autobot logo molded into the uh, back section right there. Um, now, 
uh, he he didn't have uh, a closed off back section in the movie. This is something that has to be done for the transformation, which I don't mind all that much. But that's a, a little bit inaccurate. That was a full uh, truck bed there. But you can see you got some clear bits here for the windows. Got a nice Autobot logo right there in the front. Overall, really very, very nice. You got the gas tank right there. Uh, but overall, very, very nice. Even like the little silver accents that are put in the sides and stuff. Overall, really cool look. And it, like I said, does nicely replicate it. There is a lot of uh, under stuff. You, you got like this section right here. Uh, you got a lot of junk right here, here, uh, here is kind of junky. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is there is a good heavy feel to it. A lot of that has to do with the die cast and a lot of that is in the feet themselves. Uh, you can take his cannons and you can plug them here on the side just like that there. He never had that in the movie. Uh, it's just kind of weapon storage, uh, mostly for the toy here. Uh, and, but one thing that is nice is it does kind of homage uh, that original uh, Voyager class where you would put the weapons there along the sides. They stay attached to his arms, but you can see that in doing so kind of just makes them can stick out on the side. So you can do that if you really wanted to. It doesn't really matter to me. Oh, and I just pulled all this out. So I'll just collapse that back in. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's it, it, it's not that it's it's a bad look. Uh, it's just really difficult to get it the way that it's supposed to be. And like I said, a lot of these panels and everything just you have a hard time seeing where everything is supposed to line up and tab together because you can't really see underneath all of uh, that and it's even true like in the underside here just a lot of panels that don't like cooperating when you're trying to do things so the transformation isn't all that fun but hey you guys know me i gotta show you both of these so let's get to the transformation and it is so much easier to transform this guy into his robot mode than going back here. First off, uh, mostly because everything's gonna start falling apart. So, hey, that's great. That helps out a lot. Uh, first, I'm gonna take this section. I'm going to just lift this up, kind of fold that over just like that. Come around here to this bottom section. If things then start falling apart, all you have to do is just kind of wiggle it and it'll basically come apart. And you come around here to these side bits, kind of pull these away as well again if they haven't already come apart eh, it's pretty easy to do so because everything wants to come apart uh, and then we're just going to again kind of loosen all this stuff up it, it, that's basically the easiest way to do it take this section lift this up just like so come around here to these you can fold these around and these will tab in along the back section so bring that around just like so and then bring these arms out. Uh, they just kind of swivel and come out like so. Take this chest piece. You want to lower this down like so. Let me angle up a little bit for you so we can see what's happening. Then you come around here, bring this section back, collapse this, and then this is going to tuck underneath here. Kind of rotate the head and bring this piece in like that. And that just kind of sits right inside there uh, this piece here you, you don't have to really worry about too much you want to bring these down and this part is going to get a little bit tricky uh, you have on the bottom section here uh, you have a little tiny tab that needs to lock into this so as you bring it down there's a little locking section right here just kind of push that in there and that probably will detach uh, but that's where it needs to go and that's what basically locks everything into place uh, with the shoulders. Uh, they are meant to uh, kind of rotate and still articulate. Uh, that's part of the shoulder articulation form, which we'll get into here in a bit. But there's no real, at least not anything that I can see, uh, points that lock um, anything else. Oh, wait a minute. There looks like these little tabs here. I wonder if that's meant to see that it doesn't come all the way down i thought there was like tabs here 
that it was meant to do, but it, it really doesn't. So you have that. Come around here to these top bits here. You lift these and pull all this out like that and then just push that right back down. That's his little uh, fake disc brake thing. So again there, lift this up and out you can bring that down uh, these little slidey these little bits right here actually do slide it's really tough to get uh, but they slide out and like so and then you can rotate that around like so uh, it's personal preference honestly uh, I mean it kind of cleans up the uh, the look of them I don't mind it really all that much uh, I kind of like leaving it with the GMC logo there so i'm just gonna take that pull that back out leave that like so it's personal preference do really what you want with it then you can take this whole section here again if that you gotta make sure that that stayed attached and then you just push this up you got a little slot bit right here that's going to slot into that section so kind of hold this head bring that whole thing up and uh, give that a nice little push. Doesn't seem like it goes in all the way there, um, but it's fairly secure. You can straighten out his head. These arm bits right here, you can fold these up. Now, the instructions aren't really clear on if you should leave it there. I like tucking it back uh, around this side. It's got a little rotation thing here, so I'm guessing it's meant uh, to do that. Um, hinge that up like that. And it kind of, I kind of just leave it uh, there along uh, the sides here. So hinge that up there. This little section right here, this can get a little bit tricky to rotate around. Um, this little bit right here, you need to kind of spin this around. And you go down, that goes. Yeah, rotate that around like so. And then you bring this up. These then collapse in. And this whole section comes up and this will slot in right there and kind of leave that right there. So then you put these little bits here along the side. Uh, so you can see coming together, uh, come down to these legs. You want to split these apart and then come down to this. Detach this along the side and this will rotate back and tab into place. Do that on this side as well. Bring that back, rotate that down into place like so. Take these little feet sections you can rotate and then well you probably should detach all this you bring that around pull that out and then you uh, take this section you want to slide this piece out uh, it gets a little bit tricky but kind of pull that away it's on a little sliding gimmick and then you want to take this kind of make sure that you get this piece clear of this section you want to rotate this around just like that. And then this whole section here is going to spin all the way around like so. Take this, kind of bend the knee. You wanna take that and then you fold this underneath here. That wraps around his leg and that will tab into the, uh, the back section, right? Like that. Then you can take this knee and you can kind of play with that. Fold this down, fold this little piece out. And then take this, bring this up, and then this will spin around, filling in his thigh. Do that on this side as well. So again, kind of take this whole bit here, fold that, and then detach this, kind of get that around. And then this whole panel here, it tabs in, so you kind of wiggle this free of this tire. Get that around. There we go. Wiggle that free, spin this around lots of junk here but it's so much easier i'm telling you it's so much easier you'll see you'll see lift this little piece up and then this wraps around here come around to the back and you lock that in right there fold out the little side foot piece like that kind of play with that a little bit bring this around Fold this all the way up and then you fill that in right there and basically you just kind of straighten them out you can fold his hand out I, I wish that this could tab in uh, there's like a little little tiny notch that hangs out and there's a little gap right here but it doesn't actually lock in but it, it would be nice if it kind of did so fiddle with this kind of bring these arms 
up, bend here at what's kind of a shoulder. Make sure that didn't pop out. Straighten that out. Fold out his hands here. Fold out his legs a little bit. And when you're done, like I said, it's easier going here than it is going back. But when you're done with them, there you have them in his robot mode. And to complete the look, uh, we're going to bring his cannons in here. Uh, all you do, you got little pegs right here. You just bring it around here and you post these underneath there like so. Do that on this side as well. Kind of keep that flat. And there you have them basically completed. Uh, now, uh, in terms of the aesthetic of this guy, he looks incredible. Without a doubt, this is the best looking transformable version of Ironhide that we have ever gotten. I mean, yes, he does have some junk kind of hanging off, like you got the little panels right here and everything. Come around in the back, and these are uh, kind of messy and everything, but the overall look on him is super, super solid. But what does absolutely freaking suck is all you can really do is display him. I mean, this guy is not really fun to play with. Looking at a lot of the uh, up-close details, uh, zooming in on him, I mean, he looks great. I, I, I Really, really, he, he does. Uh, that head sculpt is fantastic. You can see, without a doubt, it has that Ironhide look. You got a nice chest section. You got a nice abdomen area. You got all this very angular kind of panels throughout the entire thing, which is very accurate to how he looked in the film. Come down to the arms. Uh, it does have a lot of die cast, as I talked about. A lot of it is here in the feet, which does look good. You got a couple extra little bits right up in here, but a lot of really great angular details on him. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's just really hard to get too excited about him because the biggest drawback on this guy is his articulation. Now the head here rotates. It goes up and down, looks all over the place. His mouth also opens. So you can like, oh no, my head is falling off. Why did you do that, Sentinel Prime? Uh, I do want to make a comment that I find it funny that we're going to be getting a studio series jazz where he can be ripped in half. We didn't get a detachable rusted head. So it's like, I don't understand why they really needed to do that. The shoulders... This is the biggest problem. Um, as you can see with the transformation, it's kind of tricky to do, and there's not a lot of real good locking points. Uh, it kind of locks in there, as you can see, but to articulate it, they put all these weird joints in there to kind of move it around because the shoulder is all the way in the back here. Uh, so you can't really do much other than rotate and move things around here to get his arms to move uh, and in doing so you're probably going to knock something loose but you can get a, a range of motion i'm not even going to say it's a good range of motion you just get a range of motion this is really loose i don't like how uh, i'm probably going to have to tighten that up um but it, it's like to facilitate the arms because of the the bad design here and putting it in the back they made all this other stuff move around um and i get i can't say that that's good I don't, I don't feel like it is good uh i definitely think that they could have done a considerably better job with it especially since i'm going to bring this guy in later on uh since they were able to do decent shoulders on this which is a much cheaper toy uh so you can move all this stuff around. Uh, you, you, it, it's it's weird. You can move it forward and back. Although moving it back, it's like from this point, which just looks like his arm is disjointed. Uh, he rotates at the upper part of the bicep. He bends here at the elbow. Really nice ratchet joints. The uh, hands here do rotate. They also flex forward and back. The thumb has uh, two joints that you can articulate. The fingers have joints, so you can articulate that. Uh, that kind of cause this problem with the transformation going back into his uh, vehicle mode. We'll cover that here in a bit. Uh, he does rotate at the waist, getting these arms kind of out of the way. He does have nice ratchet joints here at the hips. They move in and out. He does have a knee, the, no, I don't, no, he doesn't rotate up there. He does have a knee rotation and a knee bend, um, 
but really not much of an e-bend because this get that arm out of the way this section here gets in the way so you can kind of do it sort of maybe and, and, and when you're moving things around, you can see like all this stuff kind of flips around. I don't, I mean, honestly, I like leaving it there. I guess you could leave it on the back. It just feels like there's too much junk there now on the back. And you see, when you move the arms down, it just, it, yeah, like here it detached from the uh, little post section, which is really, really difficult to see in here so i want to have to fix that here in a bit but it dislocated his shoulder so moving things around really does just kind of screw things up and i don't know if i like leaving that there i think it looks a little bit better if you kind of tuck it in so do whatever you want uh but with the feet you do have ratchet joints moving forward and back uh they sort of move side to side uh the toes i guess you could kind of say are a little articulated you, you got a lot of articulation points maybe you could just have a thing and yeah I, I mean this is this is kind of one of the things i was talking about where uh you move things around and it, it just completely uh detaches from it and it's hard to see so there we go i think i got it no and i thought i had it back in there it's not a good design. There, there's no question about it. Uh, I, I mean, there are difficult transformations that are out there. And I, I mean, in general, it, it it looks good. This figure is a figure that looks good. This, this part also, I, I wish that this would tab in and lock. There's like this little tab section here. I know I talked about it, but there's a little tab section underneath here. And a little slot thing here, uh, but it doesn't like reach there. Um... So it doesn't lock in, and I, I wish it kind of did. It just kind of sits there. Maybe that's what it's supposed to do. I don't know. Um, but it, he looks good, like I said. But that's it. He, he just looks good. He's not a functional figure. I mean, I guess you could just like do something like this with him and just have him kind of stand and, and look kind of cool. Uh with them um it, it it just there's there's a disappointment that i have in this figure because i was really looking forward to them and for the most part these uh movie masterpiece figures really have done a good job of nailing everything the look for the robot mode the look for the vehicle mode and the transformation the transformations have always been a little bit iffy on these movie masterpiece figures but this one is just kind of a mess now for a comparison obviously he here he is uh, here's the studio series version um which doesn't necessarily have the same uh level of accuracy that the movie masterpiece one does uh but they, they just, and, and I still see a little face right here. You got eyes, you got the nose, and you got a face. I wish they could do something with this. This would make this figure infinitely better if you could get rid of this. But it's like they were able to get the shoulders here uh, and, and, and looking good and functioning. And all this stuff cleans up so nicely. And, and it's just, it's a cheaper figure. Uh, so, I, I mean, obviously it's much smaller, uh, but... I, I, I really got to say, if you just want something that you're going to display in your collection, um, yeah, this is good, but this is a much more functional figure. I mean, I love the look of it, but for the price, I just feel that this is just a disappointment. Honestly, I'm thinking about just like taking some silver paint and maybe adding some silver to this guy just to kind of make it look a little bit better because this is the one that I'm ultimately going to keep in my display, which is a shame because I really do love the way that this guy uh, looks. All right, so now we're gonna transform him back and he is a total pain in the ass. First, we're gonna come around and we're gonna take his uh, guns off here. Just pull those off, they just peg in, very simply throw these off to the side. And we're gonna start off first with his legs, come down here to this section and you want to Kind of move this back so it creates a little bit of clearance here for the little panels. And then you come around here to the back and you separate this 
and you rotate this around. Uh, if that fell down, just kind of move it back up and you have it now off to the side like that. Do that on this side as well. Again, just kind of angle this knee a little, fold this bit up, and then you separate the panel and you rotate that around just like so. Then come down to these panels and you want to pull them away on the little slider and then rotate them around, kind of getting them around all this junk that's on his feet. And then take this section here in his thigh, lift this up, and then you swivel this down. Uh, now, if you didn't have this collapse, you want to make sure that you push that back down so that when you bring this around, this uh, little thigh piece, it will be kind of over that. So get the foot kind of out of the way and bring that down and get that all kind of lined up right there along the side. So again, do that on this side. Come around here, you want to slide this up and then rotate this around. You got a lot of junk here with the, uh, the feet and stuff. Like I said, it's kind of a mess. Lift this and then swivel this piece around. Make sure you tuck that down and then bring all this around just like that and push that over there and uh, again it's a mess but it's not too terribly kind of problematic yet come down here to the uh, the feet section you want to take this section rotate this around do that on this side as well and then you can fold these little pieces down like so this whole back section here will then flip up and around and now it's just a matter of kind of lining things up and tabbing things into place so you can bring all of that in and give everything a bit of a squeeze as you're doing it you can kind of see where all the tabs are uh, again this section here is not overly complex you just have to squeeze everything together and then make sure all of this is tabbed in on the bottom side here which can be a little bit tricky uh, again to see and do just kind of push it all in there but uh, basically you have the back section done which very simple for that now we get to uh, some of the more complicated parts you want to pull this section away and detach the shoulders uh, if they haven't already detached I should say uh, but you got a little on the inside right here uh, i don't know how well this is going to come across but coming here you can see right up in here is where everything kind of connects that little tiny section right there that's what you want to detach so just give that a little tug to pull away and this one already did this one is going to be a pain in my butt and not want to detach so kind of just get your finger in there, there we go. And then pull all this away just like so and just kinda move everything as best as you can out of the way. Come around to these sides, you wanna lift this. Always remember to do this, I have a tendency to forget. Tuck that under and push that through, kinda lift that, do that on this side as well. Tuck that down, lift this up, push that under and you can just tuck that up along the inside just like that. You can take these panels here along the side, separate those, just kind of pull them away like that. They're going to flop down, but you know, just kind of leave them there. They do what they need to do. And then take this back section and you can kind of put this kind of where it's going to need to be along the back of his arm, kind of fold that down. You can see the, uh, the side here kind of coming together still going to be a little bit of a mess come to this back section you want to just accordion all of this out fold this all around and this is going to kind of go right here and then take this bit rotate this all the way out and then you can extend these little pieces out like so and then you can come around here to this get that detached and you can tuck his head down there now this is all going to come around here so kind of just maneuver everything where you basically need it to be lifting this there and then rotate this towards the front just like that these arms you're going to have to fiddle with these and then bend them here 
at the uh, elbow and kind of shoulder area. Put them in a more straight position like so. Do that on this side as well. You got the hand here. Rotate this up. We'll play around with the hand in a second. That's going to be uh, a point of pain in the buttedness. So just kind of bring this all the way around. And you can kind of see it getting back. Like it's, it's just a matter of all this stuff doesn't line up all that well. And it's very, very fiddly. You want to take the hands. You want to bend these. Kind of keep the thumb right there and kind of pushed up along the side. Uh, I've seen some people talk about how it, it matters the way that the thumb is. I don't really think it matters all that much. Um, your uh, mileage may vary type of thing. And then just kind of put all of this around the side. And again, you're just kind of fitting everything sort of where it sort of needs to go. And it's going to become a part where you just got to line up all the panels. It's so much easier going into his uh, robot mode because just everything kind of just explodes out. I mean, that's really the gist of it. So let's get this piece here kind of tabbed out. So you got this little section here that you slide down here and that'll kind of lock into place there, holding everything partially together. Uh, then bring all of this stuff down and in. You kinda gotta make sure his hands stay in here. Let's flip this up so we can kinda see what's happening. So bring these up. And I'm leaving this part, uh, as you noticed, I uh, started doing like the editing thing, uh, but I wanna leave this on here so you can see the, the frustration uh, element of, of this guy um, because he does have that and I don't want to minimize that uh, because that's one of the aspects about this figure that I don't like is the frustration of him so when you have it like this okay make sure that you keep I don't I'm, I'm not there we go I don't think I had his uh, waist collapsed you want to keep everything as straight as humanly possible and that popped out so you gotta push that back in these little panels here along the side are going to lock in his windshield flopped all over so here we want to push this in and again it, it's uh, it's a pain in the butt you just kind of moving stuff where it needs to go and again i'm trying to yeah is that right maybe that's no like that all right and then just kind of, you're hearing it right you're hearing the frustration in my voice I'm trying to keep these forward and then you have to bring all this in holding this down Bring this up and kind of push that in there. There we go. But these little pieces here, <laughs> like I said, lots of panels and uh, kind of BS in doing this guy. Um, everybody talked about, uh, I, I remember like back in the day, people talking about complexity and stuff. And the thing with these robots in the movies, if you go back and watch, they're very, very in-depth. Uh, and, and that's true here as well. Uh, the, the thing that's really coming to, to light here is that in doing these Transformers and trying to get them as accurate looking in every way possible, it's a pain in the ass, uh, what it ends up creating is this mess here with this. And it, it's just, it, it isn't fun. It, it really is so, so unfun to fucking do. I swear to God. I know, I know, language. But, I mean, 
all this all this just doesn't line up well maybe if I maybe if I try doing this keep these things from flopping around trying to bring all this together here I mean it's, it's these panels it's these panels uh, uh, so not enjoyable to do so like I said you had all that stuff in the movies and they were made up of billions of moving well maybe not billions but like millions of moving parts and all of those parts as they were moving you know what I, I know what part of the problem is here you have to shift this down push this you gotta kind of wedge this kind of off to the side that's all this stuff is a giant fucking mess just too much moving junk in it but but like i said that's ultimately uh what the 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 michael bay transformers consisted of uh millions of moving parts that resulted in robot modes that they they wanted the parts to go somewhere so it all looked very realistic uh, the problem, though, is that in doing it, uh, they created these almost impossible uh, designs in, t in terms of a toy. So I'm trying to get these little pieces here uh, shifted to where they're going to line up with the tires and kind of lock those in place. Um, I, I want to say that... Uh, you piece of shit um to get those properly lined up something like that um and it ultimately looks good on screen but when you're trying to create a toy uh all those parts still have to go somewhere right and it's hard to uh, really do that in real world in the real world uh the cgi is able to do it and this is just not fun to, to do at all. Uh, so that's what I was saying in the review that uh, the, the toy displays beautifully in these different modes. And <laughs> when you can get them. In, in the modes that they're trying to uh, replicate. So like the robot mode, vehicle mode, all those look really good. Um, the uh, ultimate design of these though, uh, really not as good as in terms of uh, functionality, not, not really very good. So I'm just kind of fighting with this. I mean, you can kind of see what I'm trying to do here, right, guys? I mean, if you if you get this, you you just need to leave this in one mode. It's <laughs> pick pick a mode and stick with it. So, all right, there we go. I have that kind of paneled up proper. I want to say I'm looking at the back here. Yeah, that looks about right. I'm bringing these around, and these need to collapse in. Let's get this section here down. 20 minutes just to transform this thing, and I'm not even done. Ah! Stay calm. Stay calm. Always stay calm when you're doing this. If it's not working... Maybe sometimes uh, take a break. Walk away from it. Maybe I should take my advice and walk away. Walk away, Paul. Just walk away. And then... So again, these little pieces are causing issues. Can I shift this? I mean... Ugh. Ah! 
All right. But I think I have this kind of done. <laughs> no, I don't. You dirty bastard. Dirty, dirty little bastard. This thing makes me very angry. It's because of these damn little sliding things. Like, they, it's just so much crap in this. So much. You try pushing one thing in and another thing dislodges. So, all right, I, I'm just, I'm going to stop. I am going to walk away. Um, you're going to get that, and then you're going to fold that down in there. So, I got to apologize to you guys. You tune in to watch my videos for a level of professionalism for the most part. And I don't feel like I gave that to you in this video. A lot of times I'm able to kind of do my best to review a figure based on its merits. And while the whole kind of idea of this figure is to create a transformable, hyper accurate representation of Ironhide, and I will say, I feel they did that for the most part. He just is not very fun at all. Vehicle mode wise, I don't really have any real complaints. There's a little bit of kibble underneath. Uh, the back truck bed has a cover on the top of it, which isn't accurate, but I understand why they did it. And then the robot mode here really does look great as well. The addition of the die cast really does add a really nice element to the figure. Yeah, he does also have some junk hanging off like these little back panels here. But I feel like the way that they engineered the arms um, for articulation purposes, it, while it works, I just don't think it's extremely functional uh, for the most part. You have to be super careful when you're moving this guy around and I do understand that this is not necessarily meant for kids and isn't meant to be played with but it really does make him as an adult not fun to play with very much. I mean he looks fantastic don't get me wrong I mean he really really does but the biggest Downfall on this guy is his transformation. It is absolutely not fun to do. Now, I don't mind a challenging transformer. It's just when things are not kind of fitting the way that they're supposed to, that really does drive me nuts. And this guy has a lot of that. Getting everything to tab into place is just kind of headache inducing. So I do strongly recommend if you're going to you know pick this figure up and you know i do recommend him still despite the fact that he's not very fun uh, i still think that he displays very very nicely uh, if you want a figure that is more functional and still looks pretty good that studio series one is going to be my uh, preferred uh, version of ironhide but this is the best looking one that we've ever gotten i take nothing away from the overall design and engineering of this i just wish it was i don't know a little bit more functional in terms of the transformation so as i said i do recommend them but pick a mode and stick to it that's probably the best course of action with this guy. So all that being said, if Ironhide is a figure that you'd like to add to your collection, he is available at various online retailers such as Big Bad Toy Store. For that, I'll put a link down in the video description where you'll go to BBTS and you can check out availability on this guy as well as the rest of the wide range of Transformer figures. But beyond that guys, that's about it. Remember, if you like this video, I would really appreciate it, guys, if you would show your support simply by hitting that thumbs up button. It actually does go a long way towards helping me out, and I would really appreciate it. And a huge thank you if you made it all the way to the end of this very long video. I know it was a long one, but another way that you can really help support my channel is making sure that you watch a video all the way through. And if you did that for this, thank you very much. Also, I gotta send a huge shout out to all of my patrons who through their continued support now more than ever help to make reviews like this possible. And finally, remember, the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.